don't lose money. This is the most important section of the course because it deals with the most important topic of trading, which is risk management. And the most important rule of trading is don't lose money because if you lose your money, you can no longer trade. Now, here's a very famous quote from Bernard Baruch. Even being right three or four times out of ten should yield a person a fortune if he has the sense to cut his losses quickly on the ventures where he has been wrong. So in this section, we're going to take a look at that and what it means to cut your losses and what it means to have big winners. Let's take a look at two traders. First, we have Joe. He does trade number one and he makes $100. On his second trade, he loses $500. Trade three, he makes $100. Trade four, he makes $100. Trade five, he loses $400. So what happens to Joe after five trades? He has three wins and two losses. So he won on the majority of his trades, but he lost $600. Why did he lose $600? He had this $400 loss and this $500 loss. Even though he won on the majority of his trades, big losses did him in. Now let's look at Bob. Bob, he has trade number one. He makes $500. He loses $100 on his next trade. He loses $100 on his next trade. He loses $100 on trade four. He loses $100 on trade five. Overall, he makes $100. He only won on one trade. He had four losses and one win, but he came out ahead because he had small losses and a big win. Okay, so it's not about winning percentage. It's not about being right. It's about having small losses and big wins. Okay, so what happened to Joe is he was right the majority of time, but he had small wins and big losses. Bob, he was only right one time. But what he did well is when he was right, he made a lot of money and he cut his losses on these other trades. So this is what I mean by cutting your losses. I mean, when you're wrong, you get out quickly for a small loss. And when you're right, you let the trade work itself out. No one is perfect. Most people, when they enter trading, what they think is going to happen is they're going to learn a secret and they're going to learn a recipe and they're going to be right every time. And they think it's like baking a cake. If I could only learn this recipe, if I could only learn this secret, then I'm going to be making money every time. No one is perfect. No one makes money every time they do a trade. Okay. Even Warren Buffett, he's known as one of the best of all time. He's a billionaire. Okay. Warren Buffett, he bought this stock here in 2013 for 7250 and now it trades at $29 a share. Okay. So nobody is perfect. Even if you're a billionaire, Okay, and you're known as a genius, you will have trades where it turns against you. Okay, So no one is perfect. Get this idea out of your head that you're going to make money on every trade. It's not going to happen. This is what successful trading looks like. Okay, You have your one big win, and then you have your small losses. That's what happens in trade. No one's going to have trade one, 500, trade two, 500, trade three, 500. It doesn't work that way. Okay, What you're going to have to have happen is big wins and small losses. Here's United States Steel. This was once a $40 stock, over $40, and look at it now. It's at $15.11. What people make a mistake with in trading is they think, oh, it will come back. It will come back. It will come back. Well, what happens when you think like that is you're at your best case scenario is you're waiting years for the thing to come back to break even, or you just never get your money back. So here in United States, if you had bought this, let's say, at 45 okay, and now it's heading under here, it's got to go a long way back up to go here. It's got to triple just for you to get back to break even. It would have been smarter to say, hey, let's say you bought it here. Say, hey, you know what? I made a mistake and sell it at, let's say, 37 and then you don't lose all this money. Okay, so the key to trading is you want to cut your losses. When a stock starts to turn against you, you got to get out quickly. Now, some people say, oh, well, it may turn back up and, and return to its prior high. You don't know that. Yes, it could happen. Okay, so this one here. You bought it here. You could say, okay, it's coming down here. Okay, it's going to come back up. You don't know that. Maybe it does come back up. Maybe it heads lower. So you have to guard against these massive losses. That's the key. If a stock start, starts to turn against you, 
get out quickly before it becomes a big loser. Because guess what? If you're still holding this thing at 15, it's going to be a long, long time before it gets back to 45, and it may not even get to that level. Okay, so you can't let something like this happen to you because this is how you lose a lot of money. You hold on to a stock as it's going down and down and down against you. Okay, so do not do this. What you want to do is if the stock is starting to run against you, you want to get out quickly. Something like this, once it loses support, you got to get out. Okay, see how the support level here is broken? Once the support is broken, you got to get out. Sometimes these stocks will really, really go down for long periods of time. Notice this one here. This is the Warren Buffett stock we talked about here. This went from 72 to 29 pretty quickly, okay? So even if you're Warren Buffett, even if you're one of the best of all time, really bad things can happen, okay? So that's why you have to guard against stocks going against you. Something like this, you see it lost this support area here. Once it lost this $70 support area, you got to get out, okay? Because you can't be holding this thing to 29, 78. If you get out, when support is lost here and you say, hey, you know what, I made a mistake, let me take a small loss, then you can take that money and you can invest it in something else. Then you can even take it and put that money and put it into the bank. But if you're holding on to a stock as it heads lower and lower and lower, you could really, really get wiped out. So never hold the stock as it's going against you like this. This is how you lose money. What you have to do is you have to cut your losses. You see, you say, okay, I'm in a stock and it was heading higher and now it's turning against me and major support has been broken. Then you have to exit the trade. So let's take a look at this one here. So let's say somebody says, hey, you know what, Fang, this looks great here. It's it's down here. It's oversold. Let me try to buy it here. This is 73. It's going to bounce back to 91. Right? So let's say somebody has that mindset. They say, okay, our size oversold, maybe a little support here. I'm going to buy it at 73, and this thing's going to go at least to 91. Let's see what happens next. It falls all the way to 61. Okay, so now if you had bought it at this point, you really need a strong rally for it to get it back to where it was. Okay, Maybe it happens again. It's oversold again. Maybe it happens. Now it heads even lower. Okay, So now it's at 48.11. At this point here, it's at 61, 61.06. Now it goes to 40. It goes even lower. Okay, Now the problem with this, with this trade here is there was a major support area here at 70. Okay, We had this RSI bounce. So it was looking good here. Once that support was broken, this person sort of exited their trade. Okay, They take a small loss and say, hey, you know what? I made a mistake. Let me get out of this. Instead, now they're writing this thing down to 48.11. Okay, So when you see RSI oversold like that, sometimes you get a small little bounce like this. Sometimes you don't get a bounce. Okay, So nothing is ever going to be perfect. Nothing is going to be 100% guarantees you're making money. So what you do is you put a stop loss in and you guarantee yourself that you don't lose all your money. So in a trade like this, let's say I took this trade here and I say, you know, our size oversold. We got a little bit of bounce. Let me buy. Maybe you buy one of these days here. You get a little bounce. But then if it turns against you and the support area is broken, then you exit the trade. Okay, because you don't want something like this to happen where you bought, bought it, let's say, around 72 and now it's at 48. And notice FANG goes even lower. Okay, so sometimes crazy things like this will happen. Once a stock loses support like this, it can really, really fall very quickly. That's why I recommend if you buy something like this off support you know, over after an oversold level like that, if it turns against you, get out. Okay, because really bad things can happen. Now, if you're if you're holding this thing at 26, you gotta have it triple just to get back way up to here. Okay, so you don't want to be in that position. So that's why we have a support level here. If you're buying it after it's oversold, you look for a little bounce. If you get that bounce, great. You make a lot of money. If you're wrong, you get out quickly. Okay, because this is what kills people. They hold the stock as it goes lower and lower and lower. And at this point, they're saying it can't go any lower. It can't go any lower. It's bound to go higher. And then something like this happens. Okay, so never, ever let something like this happen to you. Cut your losses. If you're in a stock and a major support level is broken, get out. Let's take a look at some various traders. So first we have cutting losses Carl. Carl starts with $10,000 and he takes a 10% loss. He loses $1,000 and has $9,000 remaining. If he can take that $9,000 and get an 11% gain, he will be back to break even. He'll get his $10,000 back. Okay, so if he loses 10%, he needs an 11% gain to get back to break even. Tim also has $10,000, but he takes a 20% loss. 
he loses $2,000 and has $8,000 remaining. He needs a 25% gain to get back to break even, to get his account to $10,000. Harry, Harry loses half his money. Okay, so now he only has $5,000 left. He has to double his money just to get back to where he started. And unfortunately for Ned, Ned loses 80% of his money. He loses $8,000 and only has $2,000 left. He's got to take that $2,000 and times it by five to get back to $10,000. So you see what the problem is? See how huge losses devastate you? If you have a small loss, you only need an 11% gain to get back to where you were. If you have a huge loss like Ned, you have to become a superstar. You need a huge return just to get back to where you were. Now notice, if Ned makes a bunch of great trades and he makes five times his money, he still didn't make any money. He just got back to where he was. So this is why you cannot have huge losses. Somebody who experiences something like this, they never return from it. I'm telling you, because it takes so long mathematically to get back to where you were. Whereas if those these, these traders over here, if they all were in Fang, if Carl gets out quickly, he's the one who can return. Ned can't get back because this devastates him, right? So look at Ned. Ned's down here saying, oh my God, what happened to me? I lost all this money. Where Carl, he gets out here and he can take his money. He can buy something else, okay? Or he can even put the money in the bank or go on vacation, whatever. But for somebody like Ned, He's totally wiped out. So this is why you must use a stop loss. This is why you say, hey, you know what? At this point, I'm going to cut my losses. I'm going to keep my losses small, and I'm going to get out of the trade. You can never, ever do something like this because no indicator is perfect. RSI is not perfect. Support is not perfect. MACD is not perfect, right? Nothing is perfect. That's why you guard against risk of ruin by cutting your losses. The other problem with holding a stock that has fallen so much is that if you had something like FANG here and it's got a triple just to get back to this previous level, the problem with that is the stock has already shown you weakness. It's already shown you that it's not likely to triple because it's been having so much difficulty the past few months, okay? So you're really setting yourself up for a terrible situation when you hold a losing stock like this. A losing position ties you up. When you hold on to a losing position, you are stuck in the stock. You miss the opportunity to get into another big winner. The stock may continue to go lower. Mathematically, if you have a big loser, you really needed to go on a strong run to get back to break even. This is unlikely since the stock has already shown weakness. Also, what happens to you when you hold on to a losing position, like, a, like, like Fang here, what happens is you lose your confidence. You start saying, oh, I'm never going to make money in the stock market. It's rigged. You start saying stuff like that to yourself. So that's why you can never, ever, ever hold on to a losing position. Everyone has trades that don't turn out as planned. The key is to have money left for your next trade. Okay, so everyone will have a trade. It didn't go the way they planned. But what the pros do is they cut their losses quickly and they have money left over to invest in something else. What an amateur does is they hold on to their losing position and it wipes out their account. And we showed you mathematically earlier on in this section how that happens. So please cut your losses. If you buy a stock and it starts to run against you, get out quickly. Make a rule to limit how much you will lose on a given trade. Take a small loss and move on. If you hold on, there's no guarantee the stock will return. Let's take a look at AMD. This is a stock I currently own, and I'm going to walk you through my mindset on why I took the trade and what I'm going to do to limit my risk. Okay, so now we're looking at a blog post I did about AMD, and this one broke resistance here at 58 a few days back. And notice it had a lot of resistance at 58, and I bought it on this day when it had this strong, strong breakout. Now, even though it looks good, even though MACD is turning up, there's a strong candle here, heavy, heavy volume, break of resistance. Even though everything looks good, I still know in the back of my mind that anything can happen in the stock market and any stock can turn against me very quickly. So because of that, I have a plan to manage my risk. And here's how I'm going to do it. 
if AMD starts to turn against me and it starts to lose lots of support areas, like here, you see 52 is a support area, you see lots of candles bounce off that 60, that 52 area. If, if AMD would lose 52, I would exit the trade. Why would I exit the trade at that point? Well, you would say, well, maybe it comes back. I don't know it's going to come back. What I have to do is I have to take my small loss, and then that guards me against the risk of ruin because I cannot be holding AMD if this thing's at $20. Okay, I remember we saw that with FANG, how it, it collapsed very quickly. So my mindset with this trade is it breaks out above resistance. If this thing goes to 120, great, I make a lot of money. If it goes down to, let's say, 52 and loses that area of support, I'll get out and I'll exit, and I'm not going to be holding this thing at $20. Okay, So my, my whole mindset is if I'm right on AMD, I'm going to make a lot of money. If I'm wrong, I'm not really that worried because I'll just lose a small amount of money. I hope that makes sense, right? Remember what Bernard Baruch said. If you cut your losses, you can make a fortune. That's the key to cut your losses and let your winners run. So you want huge winners and small, small losers. So in this one here, I'm making a bet that this one's going to break out here and head higher. And if it turns against me, I take a small loss, no worries. I take a small loss, no big deal. I can stomach that. But I can't let this thing go from 61 to 21, and I'm still holding it. Can't do it. What I want is a small loss or a big win.